Hello, this is Dr. S. Robert Rosberg from the Hospital for Special Surgery, and I want to give you an update on bone defects treated with bone transport, with particular attention placed on the big advances that we've made in this field. I'm going to show you two case examples, one treated the traditional or older way, and one treated with the modern approach of integrated fixation. Uh, you'll see both accomplish the same goal, but with the modern technique, uh, the time required for treatment is much less, and it's much easier for the patient. This is an example of a 25-year-old man who suffered a traumatic bone defect of his tibia. You can see there's a large segment of bone that is missing. He presented to me with this external fixator supporting his leg. This is a limb salvage type situation uh, and it's difficult to reconstruct this bone defect. The technique that we used was bone transport using a two-level hexapod frame. And what we essentially are doing is transporting the bone, the middle segment, in a distal or downward direction towards the ankle. We showed that this technique was very successful in terms of being able to um, correctly and comprehensively treat defects of both the soft tissue and the bone, as seen in this publication of Journal of Orthopedic Trauma. The case continues, and you can see that the transport fragment has moved in a distal direction. You can see the new bone that has grown in the proximal tibia. So this is an internal bone lengthening, and you can see the docking that has occurred as it reaches the point where union will occur. This is the type of external fixator that's required for bone transport. This is a front view of the same thing. You can see the patient is able to walk and stand, especially as the bone is healing. He's well aligned and he has equal leg lengths. At this point we're waiting for bone consolidation and in total that takes about a year. This is the final outcome showing a well healed tibia front and side views um, and a patient who is very functional. I'm very proud of this result but it took a year uh, of time treating this and it required being in the external fixator for about one year. We published our experience on repair of tibial nonunions and bone defects with the Taylor spatial frame or the hexapod frame, and I'm proud to say that overall we had final bone union of 95% of our patients. And we concluded that one can comprehensively approach tibial nonunions with the Taylor spatial frame. This next case illustrates the evolution and the new way that we're dealing with this problem at this time. This is a very challenging situation of a 29-year-old male who presented to me with an infected tibial nonunion and a 17-centimeter bone defect. That's a large bone defect. As you can see, presented with an open wound and with um, pus draining out of the leg, and the x-ray shows a very suspicious large area of bone that appears to be infected and dead. This is what it looks like at surgery where we approach the bone segment and ultimately it was necessary to excise the dead bone segment. The first stage of surgery involved placing an antibiotic coated intramedullary nail to eradicate the infection. He was treated with culture specific antibiotics for six weeks. And then once that was complete, we were able to do the reconstruction part, which involves bone transport over the intramedullary nail using a cable technique. Here you see what it looks like. There's an intramedullary nail inside the bone, and we're using uh, cables to pull the bone distally over the rod. 
So it's bone transport similar to the first situation, but as you can see, it's sliding over the intramedullary nail and um, working towards the docking site. Here you can see the advancement, all the proximal bone formation noted, and the transport segment moving in a distal direction towards the ankle. And in this picture you can see that docking has occurred and now we can remove the external fixator. This is what it looks like in the end with a well healed uh, reconstruction, the intramedullary nail in place, healed at the distal docking site and all that 17 centimeters of bone uh, is well healed. Now in this case the patient wore the external fixator for six months and the bone defect was 17 centimeters. Had he been treated with the classic technique, he would have required being in an external fixator for about a year and a half. So this was a tremendous advance in our ability to treat large bone defects and salvage legs with this type of complex situation. We published our experience comparing the classic technique to what we call integrated fixation where we use a combination of the internal and external fixation. And we showed that it was equally effective but it was much quicker and much easier for the patient with the integrated approach getting people out of the fixator in significantly shorter amounts of time. Furthermore, there also was a decreased uh, risk of refracture after the fixator was removed. So in summary, the, the use of integrated fixation or a combination of internal and external fixation has been a significant advance in limb reconstruction surgery and limb lengthening surgery. And this, uh, these two case examples of limb salvage surgery help illustrate this important advance. Thank you for allowing me to share this with you.